anyway, I'm restarting the, the introduction. And so I would like to, to welcome you to this webinar, which will be about digitali digitalizing informal transport in the Global South. And first of all, I would love to present to you the, the, our association, Trophy, which is organizing this webinar together with UN Habitat in the context of Urban October. Next slide. All right, the mission of Trophy is to improve public transport and active transport worldwide and through digitalization. So the idea is more or less, actually, we do focus mostly on, on, on developing countries and also on cities of developing countries trying to improve their public transport uh, network by or at least trying to improve the experience of users by improving those um, information given through about public transport networks. So trying to make the public transport more accurate, helpful and so attractive to the people. And very fast, the application, the first application deployed by Trophy was in 2018 in Cochabamba in Bolivia. And the NGO was founded in 2019, actually between Bolivia and um, Hamburg in, in Germany. So overall, actually, Trophy is about mapping informal transport or actually all kind of networks, but there are we do specialize in, in informal transport. Leo, we can see. <laughs> and so um, this is how it looks like our application, uh, but we don't have to, to go very fast on it because we are going to talk about it later on. So maybe you can pass the slide, the slide Leo. It's just simple. Um, trip plan app with the exception that it's um, quite, it's not live and it has different level of integration, but actually I will discuss it later on in my presentation and, and later on. Anyway, so Trophy has project all around the world. The one which are actually already deployed are in green. So Cochabamba in Bolivia, Dutama in Colombia, Accra in Ghana, etc. That one is pretty interesting in Morocco because because of the app is fully open source, it also mean and the process it's also mean that uh, people from all over the world can actually implement Trophy and just create the app with their own uh, customization. And it's what happened in Tetuan with someone from Morocco who did implement uh, such an app after mapping all the network of Tetuan. Next. And so let's start this webinar now that we are already late. And I would like to give the floor to Andrea, Andrea San Gil Leon. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? I hope so, yes. <laughs> Can one of the organize, uh, organizers confirm? Yes, okay, perfect. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much to Trufi for the space to, to share a bit about the Global Partnership for Informal Transportation and what we do. Um, I'm gonna give a brief info about what informal transportation is, an intro, sorry why it's important and things to keep in mind when we're thinking about digitalization in this sector. Um, Trufi will give amazing examples of what they're doing, but I'll give a little bit of an intro about digitalization in general in this sector. And when I talk about informal transportation, what I like people to ask themselves is what would happen if you lived in a place where you had no access to public transportation or very limited access, uh, public transportation provided by the government, and you actually needed motorized transport to get around to a place because it was far away and there's maybe there might be no infrastructure for cycling or walking and you can't buy a car what are your options and this is the reality for millions of people around the world and what happens if this is their situation well all of these appear 
Bora Bora's, Ojex, Okara's, uh, different people that start providing transport services. It's transport services from the people to the people. They use different vehicles, they use three wheelers, they use motorcycles, they use minibuses, they use pickup trucks, big buses, vans, etc. And it, the most interesting thing is that these pop up everywhere. And why do they pop up? It's because the city always grows faster than its ability to plan, <laughs> than the authorities' ability to plan and provide formal public transportation, government provided formal transportation. And so these flexible services appear and they're flexible. They're usually non-scheduled. They're usually on-demand public transport services. And contrary to popular belief uh, that these are disorganized and that they're unstructured, they are self-organized and they're basically small and medium enterprises. They're operators that provide an essential service for millions of people even though there's an, there's an absence of effective regulatory frameworks. There's very little regulation of how they should work and very, very little frameworks to orient these operations and integrate it into the city planning. And so it's, it's, there's many ways to call it. And we, we started calling it informal transportation because it, it was one of the terms that we saw um, in academia and where researchers have been working, but I would like to stop here just for a second be, to think about how we frame this sector and how we call it. And usually we call this sector uh, and we name it thinking about what it's not and thinking about it in a global north perspective, thinking that transport should be the way the, gro the global north does it. And so if we analyze these names, we see informal, we see paratransit, we see provisional transport, we see artisanal, intermediate, and they all seem like ways of transport that are not enough, that are, that are temporary, that are disorganized, that are insufficient, and that should be something else. But, and we even call the partnership informal, uh, global partnership for informal transportation, but the more we, we, work on this, the deeper we go, we realize that we should be calling it with a name that describes what it is. And it is popular transportation. It is from the people to the people. It is organized. It's just casual and, and it's very personal. Um, and uh, another term that I really like a lot is neighborhood mobility. That's the way in, in, they're calling it in Mexico. So this is just a conversation also of how even neo-colonialistic perspectives of what transport should look like or how transport should operate translate in the way we name this sector. And um, this also reflects in the way it's been tackled by authorities around the world where popular transport, even though it's strongly present everywhere in many countries in the world, it's often absent from planning policy and projects. And this is from Jackie Klopp. It's one of our allies. Last quote was from Julia. It's one of our co-founders. And so even though informal transport is a global phenomena and it seems to be treated as a local problem, instead of seeing it as an opportunity, as an asset that's providing an essential service in our cities. And so that's why we, we decided to found the Global Partnership for, Inform for Informal Transportation and it's different organizations around the world that believe that uh, this sector can be essential to transforming cities. It has been there for decades and we have kept ignoring it and it deserves visibility and it deserves to be integrated into city planning, into transport planning, and it deserves a, a spot on the table in transport discussions and, and discussions on how to improve transport, how to digitalize transport, how to decarbonize transport and how to improve it. And so the way we're trying to change the narrative is going beyond the idea of this is a problem to understanding it as an opportunity where millions of people around the world move around this. It is an opportunity to improve people's lives. It's an asset. It's an existing asset that we can work with. It's a, it's a service that, that's, that's working in cities and that we can start uh, using to improve people's lives. Instead of ignoring it, we can start measuring and understanding understanding it better. And start instead of thinking about eradicating it, eradicating it, we can um, start understanding it and I, making systems to 
use it as a complement to public transport, formal public transport, or to convert it into public transport, increase, increase access to transport services, generate employment, et cetera. Um, instead of formalized, integrating, instead of just electrifying, understanding it as a sector that is important to, to millions of people that are underprivileged, that uh, depend on it for employment, et cetera, and having an, a, a focus of just transition and leaving no one behind. And so when we talk about digitalization, again, we have to take into consideration all of these issues that surround the, the, the popular transport sector and that understanding the users of the sector and the operators of the sector and the regulators that have been for decades ignoring it. And we really like this, this phrase that's from Slum Dwellers International that says that the first act of inclusion is to be counted. And this is very consistent with an engineering perspective. I'm an engineer and one of the first things that we learned is if you don't measure something, you won't be able to improve it. So it's really, really important to be able to, to start measuring and generating data on popular transport. And we one of, one of the greatest examples is when people have been able to generate data and map in, in popular transport. And you see, if you see these two examples, it's really interesting how if you start mapping or if you have a map of formal transit routes, government provided public transport routes, you see a lot of gaps in that map. And you would say, how do these people get around? We're having issues connecting these people, uh, providing access to transport services. But some somebody already solved that, <laughs> because if you see the popular transit routes, you see that there's an enormous level of coverage and it actually integrates very well with the the formal and the government provided routes. And it provides access to so many other places in the city that were not connected via formal transit routes. And it's really, really important to have that data to make this visible and say, hey, these guys have an even bigger coverage than you do um how about we stop ignoring it right so it's it's a service that improves transport access and provides employment also for millions of people around the world and we need that data to start putting it on the table and and advocating for it as well um, and then in digitalization it's been very interesting to see the role of tech platforms whereas in the global north these tech pla platforms generated new asset owners, new operators, and new users, and new data. It was disrupted. It was completely new. However, in the global south, popular transport has existed for decades. So we had existing operators. We had existing users. And they were already connected. However, we didn't have any data about these. And tech platforms are, are creating a mechanism to have data, new data about the services, new data about the users, about the routes. And this data will be very useful for planning, for decision making, for integrating, and for all of the other things that I mentioned before. And we're seeing examples where the technology is fusing and it's connecting existing services and elevating their levels. So now you can use an app for this is from from Mexico. Uh, uh, Jetty is uh, a minibus service with with uh, an app. It's a micro transit um, model on demand. Um, but there's other examples around the world where you can use an app, for example, to book your spot in a minibus or in a taxi or in a three wheeler. You can book your your space so that you make sure that you're not going to be left behind or you're not going to have a spot. You can pay a premium so they can board a minibus here with not that many people. So you can be more comfortable. You can make sure what time you're going to arrive. So Technology is making the user experience much better uh, via including these elements into an existing service. Um, of course, technology also has other dimensions and other benefits. This is a great example as well. Three Wheels United is helping electrify the three wheeler sector via having technology that generates data on the daily income of these operators that are usually low income clients that have no access to finance and they have no access and they have no records of their income, et cetera. So they can't uh, can't apply for a formal uh, from a, a loan from a bank, for example, to electrify. But using technology to generate a credit record and an income record 
helps developing a de-risk lending strategy. And so Three Wheelers United, Three Wheels United generates their own technology to generate their own data to identify the risk and design a system that lends these low income clients and these operators the money to get to, to able to electrify. And it's been really, really, really interesting how they've been able to do so and very disruptive. And technology is not always uh, super beneficial. We're seeing challenges here. And this is uh, a, an article that we would really recommend you to read from Rita, Qua Rita Quadri, who's a researcher from MIT. Uh, and what she's identifying is how on the very high tech spectrum of, of digitalization, the apps that are being developed, the super apps are very much user oriented. And they're usually designed thinking or transport services, services and apps are designed thinking about users, but kind of forget that in the global south, these the operators are not necessarily a big organization or an institution or a government provider that takes care of the drivers. It's usually individuals or small operators that don't have a lot of capacity to take care of the drivers or that don't have a lot of capacity to defend themselves, etc. And so they're developing their own hacks and their own technology to kind of bypass <laughs> the super apps to make their jobs suck less, basically. Um, and so we see a, a spectrum of digitalization within the sector as well. So from very basic digitalization, which is coordination via WhatsApp, which is very, very common if you if, from the examples that we've seen in the research that we've been doing, to the super apps that are helping people build a client base or access a huge client base and scope of work, and but that are generating these bigger challenges. And so we've seen those pros and cons where digitalization and technology is enabling and facilitating coordination, communication. It decreases uncertainty for users about time, fees, about where the route goes, where I can access these services, etc. It, it improves traceability and safety by knowing who is taking you and who is driving you and what their record is, et cetera. Um, it is generating data that's useful for planning. And this planning applies for transport planners in cities that now could access this data for users that need to plan a trip or decide how to, to go from point A to point B. Um, but even for drivers and operators, um, when they can start seeing trends and information of what, how the demand is working and how they can better plan their days and, and, and their service provision. Uh, better access to finance, as we, as we mentioned, the data is helpful to generate information of how the sector works and how their income works, et cetera, and an increased client base. However, there's challenges uh, drivers are now facing fees to access these platforms um, an income that is now not immediate and daily and hourly. It's now maybe every every two weeks or every month. And so they have to they have challenges because they were used to a daily income. It limits self-organization. That's one of the challenges that Rita has been talking about as well, how now they're gig workers and not a community of people that's providing a service. And, and there's other dis disruptions that digitalization is generating on organization and association of drivers and operators, but also of users with drivers that you can look into as well. And again, that user centered approach uh, via technology works when there's an institution that's taking care of the operators and drivers as well. But if it's not, then who takes care of the driver's rights, their driver's needs, the operators, etc. It has to be a balance. And uh, just as as a closing, it's really, really important if we start digitalizing a sector that we consider for what, what problems do we want to solve? For whom? Who are we directing the solutions for? But most important is who might be left behind when we do this? And how can we address this? We have, we've identified different challenges. The good thing is that they, they, can, they have been identified and we can start addressing them and working with them. Um, but it's just things that we need to keep in mind when we when we work on digitalizing the sector so that it's truly inclusive and we don't replicate mistakes that we've done in the past. 
um, on, on digitalizing um, different services for people who use them. So thank you so much. And he here's my, my, my information in case you, you want to follow any conversation. And I'd recommend uh, also following our newsletter that's Pop Transport uh, about informal transportation around the world, what's new, who's doing what, and what's interesting to follow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Um, we continue with our presentations. Um, I'm, I'm Leonardo Gutierrez. I have some problems with my camera, but um, let me check what happened. Okay, my, my camera is blank. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Leonardo Gutierrez in business development from Trophy Association. Uh, I'm part of the of the team in, in, in Trophy. And I want to talk today about, um, about the, um, how we can con uh, construct information from informal transportation systems around the world. How we can uh, make or create information for digital transportation from scratch. Um, then we uh, in Trufi, we we work directly with communities. Uh, our idea is that the, the 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 communities can create by their own uh, the digital information. Uh, and our first step to create information from 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 informal uh, public transport systems is connect with the communities. For example, in Trufi, we start in a project in Mauritania, and we connect uh, two communities, the Trufi community and the local community, and we create uh, information of the bus roads from OpenStreetMap. We use the OpenStreetMap um, uh, platform to put all the information, um, all the information in the in the OpenStreet platform. Uh, we use tools like uh, GPS traces and, and take the buses and make all the shapes and take notes about the schedules and and, um, and time from the public transport. Then we um, check all the quality of the information and uh, then we create the GTS, uh, GTFS files based on this information. Um, we we then use the these GTFS files to run our own app. In, in our case, we we run the Trophy app. Our this is our main product in the Trophy Association, um, and uh, we allowed the the citizens of of these places to uh, plan their trips uh, based in this information. Specifically for the informal transport uh, situation, we need to make a little of workarounds. We need to make some workarounds uh, related with the with the with the system because in 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 many places we have continuous stops. It's the case of Cochabamba. We need to uh, generate the GTFS, but also generate and interpolate uh, uh, fake uh, stops. This is one of the challenges that we face with the informal transportation. Other thing important is that um, the, the authorities from these cities can use the information that we generate to improve their own uh, city plans. Um, it means that the, the, the authorities can use this information, locate the, the critical points, uh, of, of the of the public transport systems and improve the routes you know, or improve the frequencies directly. All the information is managed by the local community of the local government. Um, we were also in projects um, that um, in, in the same way we also we, we worked in projects that um, that 
generate this information, not only from OpenStreetMap, we use other sources of, of, of information. And um, our, our main focus is um, generate a platform to create trips and offer the, the, the and offer the, the, the tree planning for the citizens. We use, um, we generate the DTFS and we put all the information in a uh, uh, in a door-to-door -door, uh, road planning. We use, in our case, we use Open Tree Planner, which is an open source Open Tree Planner, uh, an open source uh, Tree Planner and we can connect then other services for example we can connect a uh, real time or other kind of service like uh, taxis or something uh, the cities not only have an app uh, standard app can also have a, a complete information of, for the entire system in one platform the citizens uh, the, the the cities can use this platform like a central of manage all the bus or, or public transport um, and then this is our heart uh, of our system this is the heart of our system and then we can use in our app or in other platform this this is important because we generate the transport data and we can uh, in trophy we can uh, share this information with other with other uh, platform or systems for example, we in, in some project we we generate all the data, and this GTFS format is shared for all the communities in an open data in, in an open data way. We release this data, and we we prefer obviously our app, but we, but any app can use our our data. For example, a Google a Movie the Transit, while well, we can use our 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 generate or other apps developed. At by the by the cities or 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 or, or other communities uh, we we are a uh, our policy is share this information for everyone uh, freely um, what is the future of the of the of the digit uh, of the data digitalization of data in in what is the next step we um, we are now focused in order in order in in in, in order approaches of the information. One is a GTSS Flex. Is this is a standard? Is now in, in development. In, but this standard allow us uh, directly, without any workaround, work with continuous stops. This is especially important for the. Uh, informal transportation systems because have special special conditions um, and we we in trophy we focus and, and we are learning how how we can integrate these uh, these new uh, data standards or an important thing is the on-demand service uh, this standard can integrate not only the uh, fixes road system or informal fixes road system uh, we uh, we can but also we can integrate uh, other system on demand for example taxis uh, tuk tuks this kind of things uh, we can integrate with the formal uh, with the formal or with the fixed road system and integrate these all the trip in one in one planification other important thing that I think is important for, uh, for especially for the informal public transport systems is uh, the real time. Our, uh, the platform, Open Trip Planner, we can uh, can integrate real time data uh, directly to in the same platform, and we can calculate um, the estimations for the for the users of the public transport system better. Uh, using the, the real-time data from the from the formal uh, public transport uh, vehicles this is this mean it, it's uh, this is very important especially for example in cities that have uh, problems of security for example because uh, the the people can the people must uh, stay in a probably dangerous place waiting the bus uh, and somebody and sometimes you don't know if the bus come or comes later 
it's uh, it is uh, is possible uh, give information in real time to the user even for informal uh, public transport uh, systems to uh, to avoid to uh, stay in a in a dangerous place or in the streets we we, we face these problems in, sadly in, in in some countries um uh, and other important thing that we can integrate to to, to our to our uh, platform is the payments. This is one of the next goals: is in, 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 is uh, integrate payment systems to uh, all the system, all the all the network. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, in some point um, think in a, in in, a, in in paying only one ticket even if you use two informal uh, vehicles uh, but you can use you can pay only one ticket we can we, we can do that uh, do that in, in, with our technology um that's that's all and i hope uh, is uh, you can uh, know about a, a little more about how we can uh, we work in 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 uh, thank you for your attention All right, should I? All right, I share my screen. Can you see my screen? I hope yes. All right. So I'm going to, so first of all, no, first of all, because of all those technical issues, I didn't present myself, so I'm Pauline Bodens, and I'm an overall a PhD student, and at the same time, so studying the studying application digitalization and uh, together with gender with gender, and so I'm also a volunteer in the in Trophy Association as a business develop, development support, and so now I'm going to present to you the benefit of using such. A trip planner apps in the global south or actually in general so first of all i would like to remind you how it look like the traditional uh, transport um, uh, way how like how say how information is given usually so here is the example of toulouse is not uh, toulouse in france is not the perfect one although there is a map and there is like um, a map which is given in every stop. So the stops are quite clear and the numbers of buses are there, but then it's not always um, fiable. Like uh, it's not always, um, the information is not always accurate. And um, I also get the, the example of Pune in India, which there is also like less information is given there is no map the numbers are also written in marathi so for me to, to move actually in the city is pretty hard um if uh, at least for anyone who don't know marathi or Hindi language i would love to to give you the example of Tallinn in estonia where actually the public transport is very dense with buses trolley and trams and the information given is very um, clear and very fiable and um, reliable. Reliable is the important and accurate important words. And so actually if the information given is very good and very accurate, the application is just an option. But since um, it's not often the case in most of cities, then indeed the app, uh, app is needed in a way that it can fill this gap and also optimized. So there are two ways. It can fill the gap because the information is not there. It can also, so this is more the case in Global South cities, but it can also, but not only, and it can optimize also those information. It can, I can show you later, but it can, um, indeed, it can improve. So it can optimize in a way that you can better plan your day because you know when the bus will come, exactly when, and also when you will arrive. But this actually depends on the level of information, of integration 
the application has, the application that you are using. And one thing also to understand, because well, first of all, there are different levels of integration. Um, Trophy is quite low in the level of integration because we mostly work with uh, develop emerging cities. And those cities, um, as we say, we work mostly with uh, informal transport. So it, uh, has the information is not always accurate. We need to create it from scratch. So it take longer time to, of course, go to a more um, optimal system with like more complete system with the payment integrated. Also an application with, in which aggregate all type of operators uh, which are in the city. And this really, yeah, you just need to understand that actually there are different level of integrations. And also that all this concept of mass, because we actually call this trip plan app mass mobility as a, as a service, is actually also a concept which has behind, which is bigger than an, a simple app. It's, of course, the app as the front end, but it also, um, an aggregation of different operators and uh, integrating all the all the mobility modes through aggregate aggregators, which also require the the acceptance of all operators in one city to be part of this application and to share the information. And here you can see different usage. So I took the example of Cochabamba in Bolivia. And the example of trip planner, no, city mapper, which is the app which is um, mostly used in Paris at the moment because it's pretty accurate. And the difference of those apps are actually the usage, first the level of integration, but also the which bring the different usage. In Paris, people use the app to actually optimize the trip, to actually know when they will arrive at the destination. While in the case of Cochabamba, they will use the app in order to know which bus to take. And especially in times that they don't know the destination, they, uh, they know the destination, but they don't know how to reach there. So that's really different uh, way of using the app and related to this level of integration. In order for those kind of a trip planner app to be successful is that it need to gather data, the more data possible, data about about the, the, the routes, data about the timetables and maybe the payments and more integration possible, better the app is because of course the app gets more complete and also integrate all offer of transport networks presented in the city. So there is big importance of data. And as Andrea say, there is also and uh, at least we need to keep in mind that there is an in inclusivity challenge because especially in the global south, those apps, how say, the rich, the richer people, they usually when they are, when they have the opportunity, they will actually get a vehicle, their own vehicle because it's more convenient to move. They don't need to depend on public transport, which is not reliable enough. And the poor people, they are actually maybe not using the apps or they don't have the, the uh, dig they are not Ill digitally illiterate or they don't speak the language because, for example, in India, the mass application is maybe, or there is Chalo, but maybe it's in English or in Hindi, but if you talk another language, Marathi, then it gets complex. And so there is, we need to keep in mind this inclusivity challenge as like, um, a big uh, thing to 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 think of, and um, another benefit that I see or that there is from those application, those collection of data overall, is that we can use the data to actually benefit for authorities. They can use it through dashboard to analyze the public transport network, and then to understand where the data is missing and or at least where the people are actually not able to 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 reach the destination because it requires two three transfer of buses or or I don't know like can be any anything which get complex 
And so this kind of information can be definitely used by the authorities as, I, I mean, to improve the public transport network. So thank you. And I would like to um, ask my my colleagues, um, Luz, it's Luz who will present actually Father Cochabamba. Thank you. Uh, hello. Well, I'm Luz on the street. Okay. So, okay, here is my presentation. Well, I'm, I am responsible of Trophy of Cochabamba. So, what well, right now I'm going to show you how uh, this app begins or this project begins began in my country. And also, I'm going to tell you about my a little bit about my country first. Well, here it is this is my city. And uh, well, this, it is one of the three main cities in my country, Bolivia, and the population is more than two millions. But uh, well, to start this project, we, we were focused in Cercado, that is uh, uh, the, uh, the main pro province of, of my city. And it is the uh, we decided to start in the metropolitan area and here we have a more than 800,000 of uh, population and the uh, 50 uh, percent use public transportation then well here is about a little bit about the public transportation well as you know in my cities, uh, informal public transportation, and well, we talk about this. And in my country, they are organized by the syndicates or the unions, and well, the government don't have a control about this. Um, we just planning the roads and all of those things, uh, but uh, by user demand. And well, we don't have a uh, documentation of, of lines and that. And well, in my city, we have this type of trans, they are the micro, um, microbuses, uh, minibuses, and we call them trophies that uh, stand for fixed road cuts. And well, they are. And well, uh, they are to end-to-end uh, -end transport availability in my city. Then, well, here is our first uh, picture of our team and how we uh, be began. Um, well, uh, as we told, we, we, work, we work as volunteers. And uh, here we see uh, the volunteers for Germany and we from Bolivia and well uh, we we start with two teams maybe we can say that uh, one of the teams were, was the developed teams and the other was the collection data teams and well this part was the hard part maybe for us because well in my country we don't have an official public information for that so the collection was hard and um, we tried to get all the all this information uh, first uh, from the things that we know the roads and that we know and then we tried to talk with the people with the drivers also with the syndicates and well that was uh, our way to try to get all this information and uh, then when we got uh, all this we digitalized of uh, the roads and we decided to use open stream map because uh, also we noticed that in open stream map we have uh, the information more uh, updated that Google Maps because uh, some, for example, some names of the street were in uh, in OpenStreetMap but not in uh, in Google Maps. So yes, we saw that it was a a good uh, way to to have the the information here and also well as uh, uh, Leo told that then we use this information and 
then we we got all this and used in our app. Well, the, it was the result in, in 2019, uh, we got more than 200 uh, roads and we put all of them in, in OpenStreetMap. Then uh, we launched the, the, the app and well, it was, it has a good uh, example acceptances uh, in the media in the local media and it was good here we can you can see uh, that in that time um, all the roads and the, it is that we have currently uh, well this year in march uh, we update the app and uh, it has new feature right now and we sh we have more more roads and we decided to include two, two provinces that, that they are important in my city. We, we add uh, Kiyakoyo and Sakaba. And right now we have more than uh, 400 uh, roads. And well, our, our app it, it has a good uh, quantity of users. And right now we have more than two, uh, sorry, more than, uh, 25,000 uh, users, and that is in an App Store and Play Store. Well, this is the the case of Chufiat Cochabamba and how we start. So that's all for my side. And well, thank you. Um, hello everyone, my name is Angela and um, I am here to make a presentation, just a second, on um, transport mapping, a use case Ghana and we are going to talk about um, Accra. So Accra is uh, the capital of Ghana and Ghana is ordered by Burkina Faso, because Togo. And um, Ghana has a very interesting uh, transport dynamics. And uh, we have Trotro over here that is very um, unregulated by the government. And they started making efforts by 2015 to make sure it's being regulated. And then we have the BRT, which is the um, Ayalulu, Bus, which has gone through several um, reforms over the years. So um, the government wanted to know what is going on in the transport industry, hence the need to do digitization. What happened was that um, there was a project called Accra Mobility that was digitizing the routes and the bus stops, the terminals and everything in Accra to give the government an idea of where these terminals are located, um, the frequency of the vehicles, uh, which routes are, um, are in the city to inform them of decisions. So this um, it's a result of uh, the mapping that was done with the bus routes in Accra. And uh, this information, this data is free and open source, and it was the um, foundation of the second project called the Ghana Urban Mobility Project. So with the data that is open for us to use, it has fast tracked our processes much more faster and um, enhanced a lot of transparency when it comes to the public uh, transport in Ghana. So after we have the Accra Mobility data, we needed to digitize some of the terminals and validate the routes because uh, over time, terminals and routes um, change from origin to destination. There would be change in the road infrastructure that would result to change in routes. Um, for the project, what we did was to do four surveys. 
just to give us a clearer and much more better idea of what is going on in the transport industry. We did the identification survey where we went to every known terminal in, um, in the metropolitan Accra to identify the routes, where the cars are going, where the origins are, and uh, the destination of the various terminals and the people that are operating these terminals. This is very important because um, the trotters are being uh, operated by private organizations. Hence, it's important to have information about them. So now that we want to reform the transport system, we know who to talk to and etc. For the frequency, we wanted to know um, how often the routes are being plied in routes. So for example, for Terminal A, you want to know um, how often the buses to a destination is taken. That will give us an idea of the commuting of people from one place to the other and help us do a lot of observations and analysis that I'll discuss later. You also did onboarding. You wanted to know the itinerary of the trips. Um, at what time does this, um, some of the trips are taken? What's the duration of the trips? Uh, where the passengers board and alight? It gives an, us an idea of the traffic situation in the city. So if um, all of your passengers board from Terminal A and alight to Terminal B, all of them alight to Terminal B, you realize that, okay, stopping of the buses is not there. So there's, a reduction in um, congestion around the roads because that's a factor. We also needed to know the passengers, what are their concerns about um, bus fares? What is their travel experience? Um, when it comes to the safety of the buses, uh, do they feel safe, especially um, the women as well? And uh, traveling from one terminal to the other, how do they see the terminals? Are they safe? Are they clean? and just to understand um, transport in the perspective of the, the passengers. Just to take you through just a demonstration of how the frequency survey is done. For the frequency survey, you want to know how often um, a route is, is being taken at the terminal. So our field researcher will get to a terminal, uh, will click, go to frequency uh, on create and uh, identify that he is at the terminal because it's good for our validation process and uh, would add the trip, the trip that he or she wants to observe and then probably just choose one. This is where the, the collection that any time um, that is um, at New, New Mark Station leaves the terminal, the, the field researcher clicks that bus has left the terminal and this surveys are done over the period of um, one hour to give us an idea how often these routes are being plied and uh, we also um, ask for the occupancy of the vehicles because there are very much interesting reasons as to why some vehicles would not be full would not be of high capacity before they leave and uh, other observations are done um, as well Data, transport data is very important, especially for the government. There was a question about um, in the chat about how digitization helps um, in areas that there is, there is low penetration of uh, mobile phones, internet, and etc. This, um, the solution is that if, um, to some of these things, is if the government knows um, where these terminals are and how they operate, they can help have better reforms because um, there are certain areas that um, you might think there's low penetration, but there's high activity. Um, we, uh, in Accra, there is a page on Facebook called Chortra Diaries where people post um, what they experience in, uh, in the Chortras and um, low demanding apps, low bandwidth apps like Trophy apply these routes, know where they take the buses and um, where they, uh, they are supposed to alight and all of this digitization. So it really helps a lot. This transport data is 
also relevant to researchers to understand how the transport system it, it is happening, development partners to we strategize on areas of focus, humanitarian organizations to rely on um, data of the transport routes and uh, startups as well to um, be able to use this data to create other free and open source softwares, I hope, or um, just to make transport better. So just to talk about a few observations from what the project was about, we that there is a general poor road infrastructure even in the cities there are some places that the road infrastructure is bad and um, drivers complain so much because they have to pay more when it comes to maintenance and the passengers also complain because they um, their wires are not safe it might get broken by the time they get to wherever they are going to um, they have some, sometimes you get some bad body pains from some terrible roads. And um, also realize that some of the drivers use unapproved routes. They pass through residential areas because they are trying to avoid traffic. So it gives an idea of the government to how to reprioritize um, this, uh, this um, problem. We also realize that um, in Ghana, maybe in other parts, there are floating vehicles. So uh, the, um, the transport is, is, is categorized. We have um, unions, we have private organizations that work around the structure. So we have GPRTU, we have cooperative, and these people are as terminals. So they park their vehicles, they for the passengers to come. But there are some drivers that are not part of this union. They do not pay, um, levies to the government so they don't contribute to the development or reformation of the transport but they take a lot of passengers just by the roadside sometimes it's just by the terminals and this has made uh, some of the terminals uh, having low patronage because i would prefer to just stand by the roadside for a few seconds and take a car than uh, to sit in a car for like an hour, 30 minutes, even 20 minutes. So these are some of the issues that um, we saw. Realize that um, even though we say that uh, informal, the informal system in Ghana is not scheduled, but there are some scheduled services, which was very, very interesting to see, whereby um, the sub-urban areas of, of the city, they have scheduled services for um, market women that go to the harbor. So the car leaves the suburban areas at four o'clock in the morning and then goes to Habor and the car also picks them up at eight o'clock. So these are very interesting dynamics that we observed. We also realized that um, when there are markets and when there are intrastity city um, bus operations, the terminals tend to thrive better than those that just operate um, within the city. So if there is a market, the market women after buying their wares just is it's much more easier. It makes a lot of sense for them to just move to the terminal and uh, and take a vehicle than just a terminal with no market, no um, no other activity but just um, taking um, people. So these are some of the observations, uh, the surveys that we've conducted and um, just um, a few takeaways for for you about, uh, let's say, public transport mapping in um, in Ghana. Yes. All right, so we go through the questions. So we are a bit out of time. So we are very sorry for this technical issue, but um, I will just um, read the first question. So from Vivek, is there a way to use all of these wonderful data collection exercises to prove a simple concept, namely that people in similar places make similar trips? And this is a question for Leo. 
Thank you, Pauline, and thank you for the question, Vivek. Uh, yeah, it's, it's precise that uh, we, we, we can allow to authorities. Uh, we, our, focus, our, our goal is make this uh, available for any place that you can, uh, you can obtain and own all the data produced by the users and uh, use the, the patterns of, of the use of the public transport network to improve the, all, the, um, all the public transport system. For example, change the routes in the, uh, in the places when need more offer or move the routes when they need less offer is precise. And, and the idea from Trufi is um, that the, all the, um, all the authorities or the local communities have the power of this information and belongs and, and how they, the ownership of this information. Thank you, Pauline. All right, I think we can stop there. So I would like to thank you all to have participated in this, uh, in this webinar. I hope you really learned something we did actually, I did actually. And um, yeah, <laughs> I thank you all and I wish you a very good evening. Bye.